One of the world's greatest spots for a touristy picture is the Pisa Leaning Tower. But you can't go before knowing a bit more than that. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about things you want to know before you go to Pisa, including how to get there, what to do in Pisa, and of course, some history facts. We took a train from Florence, which was about an hour distance to Pisa. I recommend you get your tickets from thetrainline.com. Hey, we just got to Pisa. The train was really easy. No one asked for our tickets. So, so don't buy tickets, just go. Don't buy tickets. <laughs> yeah, now we're going to find the address to go to the famous tower, get some coffee, and I'll see you next. Since we were in a rush, we took a taxi from the train station to the Leaning Tower. But if you want to save yourself 13 euros, you can take a 26 minute walk to the tower. But first things first, we started our morning with some Italian coffee and a cornetto. From here, we went to get our tickets in person. However, you can make reservations online. The tickets are 30 euros per person and that includes the visit to the cathedral, the baptistery, the opera museum and of course the leaning tower. You can save yourself some euros if you don't want to go up the leaning tower which in our particular case we didn't since the epic part is on the outside anyway. It's actually leaning. Really cool. <laughs> In medieval times, unified Italy as a whole did not exist. Pisa was a city-state competing for power with its neighbors. So Pisa decided to build a magnificent cathedral known as the Duomo di Pisa. All of the buildings were built in Romanesque marble, and the most famous building, of course, became the bell tower due to its dramatic lean. People think that the tower leans because of age, but really, it began to lean when only three stories had been built. The architects tried to correct the lean, but nothing really worked. Today, the tower is also slightly curved from the attempts by various architects to keep it from leaning more or falling over. Until recent years, tourists were not allowed to climb the staircase inside the tower due to consolidation work, but now it's open for the public again. Apparently, the Battistero di Pisa is the largest baptistery in Italy and like the famous leaning tower, it also leans at a slight angle. The decorations inside are kept to a minimum, but its delicate architecture design makes it worth seeing. Also, there are exceptional echoes and sometimes they have people there doing a singing demonstration to admire the echoes. How is the Battisteria? <laughs> Next, we visited the cathedral, which is pretty much a treasure trove of Italian art. It was absolutely impressive to see, and it was my favorite landmark in Pisa without a doubt. I spent about an hour of my time appreciating every corner of this cathedral. The architectural styles used in the construction of Pisa Cathedral include Lombard Emilian, Classical, Islamic, as well as Byzantine. The actual name of the Romanesque beauty is the Cathedral of Santa Maria Assunta, and for almost a decade it remained the biggest cathedral in Europe. Inside, you will find stripped columns and a great deal of gold decoration. The cathedral was adorned throughout the years with numerous works of art. Giovanni Pisano is certainly the artist who excels at these works, especially because he has given us the famous and extremely rich and ingenious Pergamo or pulpit. And if you didn't know, the legend says that it was at the Cathedral of Pisa that Galileo Galilei, the founder of modern physics, born in Pisa in 1564, made one of his important discoveries right here in this church.
Another important fact is that a mummified body of San Ranieri, the patron of Pisa, is kept in the chapel on the left of the main altar. All right, this is all you need to know before visiting Pisa. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you very soon on a video in Cinque Terre.